Hey, what's up everybody? This is Jose from Sun Life. And Katie. We're going to drive through Bonciana, Florida. This is an area outside of Orlando that is the most Puerto Rican WEPA place in America, other than Puerto Rico itself. Well, actually Puerto Rico's Puerto Rican is part of America. That's a wrong statement right there. WEPA! Boricua! Take a right right here. Not right, right, take a left, a left. Take a left. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say left. I'm gonna say left. Wow, right? Okay, we're flying. So this is the most Puerto Rican place in Florida. Hey, actually, yeah, actually there's more Puerto Rican places like Connecticut and New York, so that's a very wrong statement. Wepa! In Florida. Ponciana, the most Puerto Rican place in Florida. You said Florida. I said America. So bro, I said America. So okay, bro, we'll play it back later. Anyways, this is the most Puerto Rican place in Florida. And if New Yorkers keep coming here, it'll be the most Puerto Rican place in the continental United States because Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory. I don't know if half the people on here forgot that. Puerto Ricans are born U.S. citizens. And as soon as they're born, they move to New York put on a New York Yankees hat and some jersey from the 90s and walk around New York City listening to reggaeton. Buy a Honda Civic, move to Florida and buy a house that is mysteriously outside of their price range since apparently they don't have a job but they live in a very nice house. All these mysterious things happen to Puerto Ricans. They make very good Puerto Rican food. By the way, if you've never gone to a Puerto Rican restaurant, I definitely recommend you go to it. A lot more food trucks because it's a new community here in the United States in the continental United States. Probably it's a new community in Florida in a lot of places. There's a lot of growing Puerto Rican communities. Uh, Hurricane Maria did a lot of damages to Puerto Rico and they all came over here. And now we have been blessed with the presence of a bunch of Boricuas who make great Puerto Rican food, drive Honda Civics, and buy houses that are mysteriously out of their price range for somebody who doesn't even have a job. Buy houses here in this area that look like the house from Rugrats. These houses, they look like the house from Rugrats, don't they? Yeah. These houses are huge, dude. But maybe it's like a Lehigh Acres type of place. Like, like, it's like the first time we went to Kissimmee, we thought, oh, it's this horrible place. Like, everybody said it was horrible. Then we went there, we're like, bro, it's like a normal place. These houses are actually pretty big. Take it right here again. It's just it's a big loop. Spring Hill. Look, these houses are actually huge, bro. Aren't they huge? Yeah. They're big. They're by no means small houses. They're big houses and they're brand spanking new. But yeah, a lot of the Puerto Ricans that left Puerto Rico, a lot of the ones that had money. Uh, after Maria, they're like, man, boy, aquí no hay ni agua ni luna ni nada. Estamos aquí en Cuba. And then they're like, we're out of here. So, um, you know, Hurricane Maria did a lot of damages. And it really is hard to recover on Puerto Rico. It's an island. It's not like, you know, it's not like, um, it, it's harder on an island to recover. You know, it's like, he, like I always mention that when we were, uh, I think a write up when we get back to the mainland. When we went to Hurricane Irma, the crews that restored the power to us were from Canada. That's not even the same country. So, Puerto Rico doesn't have that luxury. It's an island that's kind of out in the middle of the ocean, so it's kind of difficult to restore services and get back on your feet after a hurricane like that. So a lot of the Puerto Ricans after Maria, and it was like back-to-back -back stuff that happened in Puerto Rico natural disaster. Like, well, you know what? They went to Orlando, and they came over here and bought all the houses and made things even more expensive than what they already were. A lot of them had pretty good money, and that's one thing a lot of the people that are not really familiar. They, a lot of people have opinions, but they don't know what they're they're talking about. A lot of Puerto Ricans, Venezuelans, and a lot of the New York communities that are coming into the United States from other countries are actually pretty well off. In the case of Puerto Ricans and Venezuelans, a lot of them had a lot of money, and they were able to buy real estate, cash, not even financing. A lot of financing. Too many people just buy them cash, not even financing them. Just outright. Wepa! Wepa, so de Villa City. So, saludos, mi gente boricua. 
I personally don't have. First of all, there a lot of people like, oh, these Puerto Ricans are coming to my country. How stupid are you? They're born U.S. citizens. What do you mean they're coming to your country? They are your country. Stupid. Why you don't want to school that guy? It's like people are just that ignorant. Like I can't believe how many people I meet to the left. How many people I meet that think Puerto Ricans are another country? Have or, you studied U.S. history? Did you or not go to school? You know what I mean? Like. Did you not go to school? This guy's from New Jersey. All right, so that's like the southern tip of it all. And it's just mostly like, it kind of looks like Lehigh, except for the houses here are much bigger. And how often they talk about making Puerto Rico a state? Yeah, there was talk about that. There's a lot of reasons why it won't happen. For one, the crime stats are too bad. I think the the, hot, the bad crime stats are definitely going to keep Puerto Rico outside of being a state because of the crime stats. It's just they're not going to put a state that has that much crime because then, like, when you look at an online list, like San Juan will have all like Puerto Rico will be like all the most dangerous places. You know, like, the, 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 the poverty and crime stats are not something they want yeah. to, like, dominate their list. Mm -hmm. So they, they purposely won't. I think that's the real, what it really boils down to. And there's also, like, there was a time, like, in, like in the 1900s where even Cuba flew the American flag in 1919, I believe. Mm -hmm. 1919, Cuba flew the American flag. And they wanted to be a state because during the Spanish-American War... Which was like in the early 1900s, I believe. If I'm wrong, you guys can correct me. But from what I remember, um, what the crap happened right there? Uh, a lot of uh, Americans actually went and they helped Cuba and Puerto Rico become independent. Now, both Cuba and Puerto Rico wanted to be U.S. states, but the Americans were like, "We don't want to become a an empire." like the Spanish, like the Portuguese, and the English. So they're like, they weren't really, um, they, they weren't really trying too hard, the Americans, to, to let Cuba and Puerto Rico become states at that moment, even though pretty much the United States freed Cuba and Puerto Rico from the you know, from the Spanish, you know, the Americans, they didn't want the Spaniards to have a foothold right there. You know, that's really what it boils down to. Is that the Americans didn't want the Spaniards. It wasn't the Americans cared so much about Cuba and Puerto Rico. As much as they didn't want the Spaniards to have a, um, a foothold that close to the United States. By the end of the day, it came down to... At that time, the idea was that the United States wasn't going to become an empire because they had just got rid of the Spanish, just got rid of the English, and the French too were in that mix. And uh, we can go like 55 right here. So the United States was like, well, we don't want to become the next Spain, the next France, the next England. And as colonization is coming to an end, we don't want to now start expanding into a, you know, take, because the thing is, like, if they had turned Cuba and Puerto Rico into a state, a bunch of Mexican states would have wanted to be, and next thing you know, like, all of America, Panama and Colombia, 50 other countries would have wanted to also become states. So even though the United States helped liberate Cuba and Puerto Rico from the hand the heavy hand we might add of the Spaniards. And I think my, on my dad's side for sure, from his mom's side, somebody was a liberator of Cuba alongside people from the United States. Like I remember when I went to Wetumpka, Alabama in the cemetery there, there's a bunch of people in that cemetery that were, um, that fought in the Spanish American War. The grave size will say SPAM, Spanish American War. Um, 
it was important to them because they put it on their gravestones. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of a forgotten chapter of uh, American history that despite the fact a lot of Americans fought in that war and they even cared at the time they cared enough about it to put it on their grave sites you know you go to, uh, to, to, to cemetery in Alabama and all those grave sites they all say so Pensiana is kind of split up so we're going to go through a rural area but we'll be back in an urbanized area here soon and we'll get to see like the more urbanized area so we'll be back into the urban area soon I know it's kind of country through here but we'll We'll hop back into the urban area soon. So, it's 55, you're going 40, but these cars really have places to go. No me te agitando. I'm not the one that's agitando. Te. You have like 10 no cars. Te no me agitando. Listen, there's 10 cars lined up behind you, but notice how there's nobody in front of you. What's that saying? No me Means que tu eres como la basura, serie. Apurate, mija. Like I was saying, at the time of, of this happening, it was important to the Americans uh, that were in that war, but it's kind of been forgotten, really. It's really been forgotten. It's a forgotten chapter of American history. For some reason, Americans nowadays don't want to remember. Wow, driving off the road and everything. <laughs> that's, a, that's a new level of bad driver. Stay on the road, boy. I am staying on the road. The cars behind you, they, they got they backed off. You know what? Let's just let this person do whatever they're gonna do ahead of us. Your hands on the wheel. But yeah, there's always been in both Puerto Rico and Cuba historically a desire to be a state, but for many, many, many reasons, including the fact that the United States has not wanted to expand as a colonizer, really. The United States has just held on to its boundaries. And I think by international law, they're not even, nobody, no country is really, is this the second crash car we've seen on? Subaru, 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 Subaru. That might have a different issue. Yeah. <laughs> Subaru, I think the house is here a little bit bigger than Lehigh, though. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are two stories. Mm -hmm. Yards are also a little bit bigger, and they look newer. There's a lot of set two story houses here. Uh oh. They just went ahead and called the cops ahead of time. So, you know what? There's a wild. You gotta stop. You gotta stop. You gotta stop. You gotta stop. You don't have to drive off the road, but you don't have to stop. Okay, good. They're all pulling off the road, too. Cool. All right. It's a very narrow road, so you gotta gotcha. pull off. Okay. Alright, so now we're kind of in the urban core again. And uh, let's see what this looks like. We've been here before. But today we're doing it in 4K, extra high definition. Even though it's kind of late in the day. Yeah. yeah. I had to switch to 1080 probably after this video. I don't know. See how much light we get. Notice 4K at night doesn't always do good. Yeah, for some reason 4K at night does. It seems like 1080p is better at night. Not sure what that's about. Mm -hmm. What's up with cars breaking down on this road? It's like <laughs> like three cars by the side of the road here. Mm -hmm. I've road noticed a lot of boards on the... Seems like the shoulder of this road is very narrow. Yeah. And the person driving this car is very bad at driving. Mm -hmm. the shoulder? Yeah, you're, you're driving like on the shoulder. No. Yes. Be quiet. Be quiet, man. Be quiet, Nate. Speed through it, speed through it, speed through it. Yeah, you broke the law. No, I didn't. Arro con la bichuela y vianda es lo que hay. Look at all the traffic going that way. That's a lot of traffic going the other way. So I guess traffic is southbound, heading into the suburbs. These people are, it's only 7.30 at night. Traffic from in the Orlando area is horrible. I tell you that much. This is. This guy's got an old mattress on top. Georgia. This looks up by like Claremont. Yeah, we're not far from Claremont. We're in the whole Orlando area. Alright. 
So it's kind of like a suburban area, a newer suburban area. It's not bad looking. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to educate some of you guys on, on Puerto Rico because there's so many people that don't even, like so many people that I meet don't understand that Puerto Rico, it's kind of a country, but it's really technically not. It's, it's a U.S. territory. And Puerto Ricans are born U.S. citizens. They're not illegals. Like one thing that just aggravates me um, is when I hear somebody refer to Puerto Ricans as illegals. It's so stupid and ignorant, and, and they do it to be disrespectful. They they know. I don't think you possibly can be so stupid that you don't know Puerto Ricans are U.S. citizens. They might be that dumb. Yeah, they like to they, Spanish they, they people. Just, yeah. Do they do it's it because are they are, do they do it to be to be to be to be hateful and, and racist, mm -hmm. or are they really that stupid? That's what I've always wondered. Maybe both. Can they really be that stupid that they, they don't know? They can't possibly be that stupid not to know Puerto Ricans are U.S. citizens. They don't look. Don't they teach you like the they te what, like in the second grade they teach you U.S. states? I don't know what they're teaching in Alabama. No, here too. I, mean, I see people here all the time. I, they 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 have to be doing it to be ignorant. I was. There's tired. no way you can be that stupid. Yeah. This looks more like Lehigh up in here for sure, though. Mm -hmm. This definitely looks like Lehigh. It looks a little bit better than Lehigh, though. I just don't know if the home. home Isn't place. Guam the same deal? Yeah, like Guam is a U.S. territory. Yeah, and then the if you Virgin come here, Islands. You're a U.S. citizen. But you can't possibly be so yeah. dumb not to know. Take a right when you get to the main intersection. To the center section. Yeah, here. take a right. Okay. Could you really be that dumb? Yeah. I don't think so. I think they're just doing it to be hateful and ignorant. Yeah. There's no realistic possible way you could be so dumb to think. Big lake over there? Oh no, it's just a giant parking lot. Either way, whether out of you can go, you can you don't no. have to fall asleep here. No, there's cars coming. Because the way you're driving, maybe I'll wait for <laughs> the way you've been driving lately. Maybe you should wait for the light just so we're safe. I'm not sure if you're driving into a cloud of cars, just terrifies me. Go, women, go, go, go. But yeah, yes, Puerto Ricans are born U.S. citizens and uh, they do speak Spanish and Puerto Rico. A lot of the young people do know English, and no, they're not illegals. They are U.S. citizens born. Now they don't vote because it's a law. Like in order to vote, you have to be within the state. So, if you're a U.S. citizen, like in Guam or some other place that's not a state, you can't vote. So, if you want to vote, you have to be in a state. So, the Puerto Rico doesn't vote. Uh, but I think what's happening is a lot of Puerto Ricans who are avidly political have started to move here so their vote can count. I've seen that too, which is yeah. kind of dumb that you you know your politics determine where you live. Yeah. But I've definitely seen Puerto Ricans who've moved, not a lot, but I've seen Puerto Ricans who move to Florida so they can vote because they're that into politics. For the same people I can't mention. <laughs> On the outside. All right. Yeah. All right. We stay. We don't do politics on this channel. Um, we do history. We do a lot of history. Yeah. But we don't really get deep into politics. But um, I, I'm referring to this as a like I tell people when we talk about these topics, we're talking about from a social, geographical, yeah, type of point of view. But anyways. What I like about Puerto Rican culture, it's very, I'm Cuban and it's very similar to Cuban culture. Um, actually, there was a time, I give you an idea, during the Civil War, a thousand Spanish people from Cuba and Puerto Rico fought on the Confederate side, 2,000 fought for the Confederacy, and 1,000 fought for the Union. So, probably because of a geographical thing. And probably because a lot of people in Puerto Rico and Cuba were probably heavily involved in, in, in slavery. Who knows their reasons, but during the Civil War, uh, more, more Puerto Ricans and Cubans aligned themselves. In fact, 2,000 
Puerto Ricans and Cubans fought for the Confederacy and only a thousand for the Union. I, I think with that, the most obvious thing would be geographically, uh, sugar production was strong in Cuba, so it almost seemed like a natural thing that the Caribbean islands would go with the Confederacy since at the time, uh, especially during the war, all, most of the sugar of the South and, you know, pineapples, bananas, all that type of thing as well, you know, there's trade, trading partners in, in a sense or another. But beyond that, um, it's interesting how I would have drove right through that. Pero yo no soy como basura. No me te ahí tanto. Stop humming. Oh, the, don't worry about it. It's not going to pick it up. Okay. It's not loud enough. Well, anyways, the most obvious thing about that situation is that, um,. Puerto Rico and Cuba back then were not considered uh, individual countries or whatever. So they don't know if those 2,000 soldiers were Cuban or Puerto Rican because back then Cuba and Puerto Rico were pretty much considered the same thing. It was just Caribbean islands that were descendants of Spaniards. Uh, but today, of course, Cuba has its political identity and so is Puerto Rico completely differently aligned politically today but historically back in the time of the civil war it was pretty much the same thing so cubans and puerto ricans back in, the, in that time period were there wasn't a distinction made between the two um which is interesting i think it's super interesting because well for the most part cubans and puerto ricans are same music same food same culture so much as there's always people who are dumb enough to kind of um, argue, you know, which is better, this or that. But in reality, it's really the same thing. I mean, like, you can't really, well, to the point where back in that period, in the 1860s or whatever, um, it was just considered like Spanish island people or something, you know. It wasn't like uh, Cuban Puerto Ricans. When they were counted as soldiers, a distinction was made. I just think it's interesting that a distinction wasn't made between Cubans and Puerto Ricans. So they don't know if those 2,000 soldiers were Cubans or Puerto Ricans. They were just Cubans or Puerto Ricans. They were just grouped as one thing. Very interesting. Because over the years now, of course, you know, Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory and Cuba is a country. But I just found that, I always found that interesting when you look through his through historical accounts. And also, you know, like a lot of Cubans and Puerto Ricans don't realize that Cubans and Puerto Ricans fought for the Confederacy just like they did for the Union. Where sometimes um, it's not something where today Cubans or Puerto Ricans would identify with, let's say, the Confederacy. But because, you know, what happened back then versus the way history is taught today, it's almost like people selectively forget what parts of history they're, they're sharing or, 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 or you know, it's, it's not what happened in history but it, it's how it's remembered um, and that's a real interesting thing about when you look at history when you look at it from a geographical point of view especially is that some things are really clear from a geographical point of view like for example understanding why the Dominican Republic and Haiti which are on the same island are two different countries the, when you put the geographical aspect into there, it kind of clarifies a lot of stuff. Same thing with slavery. You know, the, the, it's not that the North wouldn't have participated in that. It's that their climate wasn't favorable for that. I mean, the climate that was favorable for it was like the northwestern tip of Florida, Georgia, like South Carolina, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana and into some parts of Texas. But beyond that, you know, the people up north, what they wanted to, they were really concerned about was westward expansion 
because they wanted those jobs for themselves. So the way things happen in history isn't the way they're remembered. People remember things based off of how they want to portray history based off of whatever leaves they have. But when you go back and actually see history, how bad Katie's driving, ow, what was that? Oh, I thought I'd keep you on your toes. Yeah, you definitely kept me on, you almost kept me on the windshield, let alone my toes. But yeah, it's just, it's, it's incredible how, when you look at history, how much is forgotten or misrepresented because it doesn't fit the mold the mold that they want to, to you know and that's happening today a lot I mean if you look at the news today people will portray things the way they want mm -hmm. not to be specific on anything but you know people were doing this but they view it that way it's just interesting how much people allow that um, outside you can get up there on a microphone and say stuff and if people believe you or they feel affiliated with you, you can tell those people all types of lies and they'll believe it. Despite how blatantly obvious or misleading it might be to the common eye, for some reason people just believe it or something. I don't know. To the divided highway, you don't have to stop. Most of the traffic seems to be heading southbound. We're heading north, so we're kind of going in the other way. Yeah, it's just interesting, interesting little facets of history. And the reason we're on this topic today is because this area has had a lot of Puerto Ricans come in here. And obviously, yes, they're U.S. citizens. Uh, they're coming here because they are fleeing not wars. They're not fleeing poverty. They're fleeing natural disasters. Puerto Rico is situated in the forefront of natural disasters. And a lot of the people that have money... They're tired of being without power for three months at a time. Like, if you got money, you ain't trying to do that. So they come to Central Florida. Notice I don't come to South Florida. They're in the Orlando area because it's further inland. It's still tropical. It's still Florida. But it's further inland. It's more sheltered from hurricanes and stuff like that, which is what they're fleeing. You know? And it's contributed greatly. I mean, Miami's been hit with... Um, yeah, that's probably not the best choice of words. <laughs> Miami's had... That's probably not the best choice of words right there. Miami's had a lot of Cubans, like, in the 60s. And now, more recently, uh, Venezuelans. The Cubans came with nothing, fleeing, fleeing the governments. Venezuelans are fleeing for the same reason. But the difference is, the Venezuelans got a crap load of money. They're buying land, women... And whatever they can get their hands on. The Cubans that came in the 60s had money. When the Cubans fled, from the first Cubans in the late 50s, early 60s that came over here, they had a lot of money. A lot of those Cubans. Wow. Whoa, whoa. Que eso? Oh my gosh. Bro. And this is normal here. Road raging is like definitely a thing here. You can see how people drive. Absolutely insane. This is one of the worst things about this area. Um, people are very keen. And I'm glad, I'm glad you did the right thing by backing off, by the way. Miss. You stepped on the brakes and you, you let them go ahead. You did the right thing. So you're learning from me. You're learning to drive. Keep your hands on the wheel. Yeah. So we'll keep going ahead and we'll soon be in Kissimmee. Where we'll definitely get something to eat, probably. southern tip of the Orlando metropolitan area. It's road raging here. Obviously, it's a clear road. You know, it's a clear road. There's really no reason to drive like that. I mean, it's, it's not like it's... There's not that much traffic, uh, you know, but there's just bad, aggressive drivers here. And it does escalate to violence very quickly. So if you're not from this area, the best thing to do is just not... Uh, you know, Puerto Ricans, like I said, a lot of great things. Good food, good culture, good music. Uh, economically, most of them that are coming here are very well off. There's a lot of positive things with the, the Puerto Rican community. But one thing that they're bringing with them is just this angry driving road raging thing. Check it out.